Namaskar. My intention for today's introduction, as it is a short introduction, is to give some easy glimpses on Hindu ethos and some perspectives on lifestyle. I call it Hinduism, Vegetarianism, Vegan and Mother Cow, because it was about veganism a lot. And here you see the Kamadeno, the mother cow that we care so much about in Hinduism and they, they are placed in Goshalas, a cow shelter, because we have to take care of her. And she is in herself an uh, essence of agriculture. Next picture, please. Yeah, here are some verses from different holy scriptures to understand how basic the knowledge of farming, food production and eating and the even sustainability are listed in body, mind, surroundings and religious life of a Hindu. Do food affect the mind? I present here three different uh, verses from our scriptures. First from Bhagavad Gita, the song of God, the spiritually minded who eat food that is first offered in sacrifice are released from all kinds of sin. Others who cook food for their own enjoyment rarely eat only sin. The second is from the yogi's di diet, Mitahara, purse of wisdom. Agreeable and sweet food, leaving one fourth of the stomachs free and eaten as an offering to Lord Shiva, Ismitara, yogic eating. We have also to save a half body and not overfill. And we can share our hands, put our hands together. You can see how much you should eat every time. You should not overeat. The third is from Srimad Bhagavatam, first chapter 17, three. Milking cow means drawing the principles of religion in a liquid form. The liquid is the essence. Next picture, please. And here he, she, he, she is again the goddess. The meaning is that the cow, the cow in herself, she is carrying all the gods inside her body as their home. And here is her little calf licking. And uh, even uh, all the gods, she's herself a, a goddess, and uh, she even keeps some uh, words in, in her body. Next picture. No, one back, one back, sorry. We're calling her the Gaumata, the Gau, the cow. In Swedish, cow, and it's the same long time root from Sanskrit language. The mother, our mother and mother of everything, as her body is the home. So don't eat her, don't kill her, don't hurt her. Now is next. Here are some rules. We heard this from different speakers. One should never show disrespect for cows in any way, nor should one feel any repugnance towards the urine or dung of a cow, because these, these things are also pure. When cows are grazing or laying down, relaxing, one should never disturb or annoy them in any way. Cows should never be killed in any type of sacrifice or slaughtered in any way for food as the killing of cows constitutes the most heinous of all sins in existence. That's the way we look at the Gaumata. Next. How many know this? This you have all heard about Ahimsa, the principle of nonviolence, mostly known from Gandhi, but it's more, long, long before Gandhi. It's the practice of non-violence and non-harming. And this is essential to yoga, to spiritual and religious practice. It's number one 
and the first of five yamas, the moral codes we have, also practiced in Jain and Buddhism. Don't kill, don't injure, don't harm. But it also applies to don't use violent language or speak violent words. Don't speak negatively to yourself or self-sabotage or don't do self-destruction on your own personality. I will tell you the five yamas is first ahimsa, as I told you, non-harming, promoting love and compassion. As several others have spoken about this word. The second is satya, truthfulness to being honest with yourself and others. The third is asteya, non-stealing, giving rather than taking. The fourth is brahmacharya, celebrate or moderation, conserving your energy, don't waste. The fifth and last is aparegriha, non-attachment, to let things go, to live in a flow where you can be released from both things and emotions and things. This is yogic training also, and also meditation. Next. This is from a Swedish blog. We was talking about, a little about environment also, not only taking care of animals. India is cited as an example by almost half a billion vegetarians. The average annual intake of meat in India is 5.3 kilo. It can be compared with 80 kilos per person in Sweden and 100 kilos per person in the USA. India is now emerging as a model country when it comes to sustainable eating. A number is 50% in India and 35 of them are Hindus. In Sweden are the amount around 10% with both vegetarians and vegans. Next. Growth and animal welfare means human well-being well and pleasure for guts. That's one lifestyle rule. Next. This used to, I have problems with this, it's a difficult word for me. Sustainability is also the need of personal responsibility, self-control and a more caring lifestyle. That's what we think we all need, a more caring lifestyle. Several of us are speaking about this today also. Next. Gods with animal expressions, half man, half animal. Animals placed in front of gods, carriers, saviors, and helpers. Should we not be blessed from them and respect them also if we respect ourselves? The future God, good or bad, of the climate and the environment are indisputably linked to coexistence and again, compassion. You can see behind me, I have Ganesha half, human half animal. Many, many gods this way in Hinduism. Next. I also want to mention Ayurveda in Sanskrit uh, as has its ori origin in the word Ayus, life, and Veda, science. Ayurveda originated in India more than 5,000 years ago, and it is the oldest continuously practiced healthcare system in the world. Ayurveda is built around the five elements of ether, air, fire, water, and earth. Ayurveda teaches that all illness has its roots in the area of stomach. Ayurveda teaches that all illness has roots and has uh, the forms of three different types of persons, vata, pitta, or kapha, both physically and the mental. And that, that you can balance these uh, parts in a person to make him or her more healthy. All, all the things are coming from vegetarian food also. All the medicine, especially ghee, is important. It's butter, clean butter. 
and we also have these uh, many many plants and trees but especially also to last the plant is for purification of the environment it says it keeps uh, insects away even wild animals it can give you protection from next and uh, when i mention uh, green things and trees and environment we have kalpa vriksha the hindu tree of life almost every lesson is talking about this tree of life even the vikings have this tree of life and uh, when you study a leaf or a tree, you can see that they have a respiratory system and it seems very similar to our lungs and what is in our body as well. And everything in nature is breathing, it's the essence, the beginning and the end. Oh, Mr. Sound of creation in Hinduism, without breathing, you are not on this earth. When they say that the Brahma, God of Brahma is breathing, he's oh, and he is changing, uh, he's uh, giving birth to a new universe. Otherwise he's sleeping and then he wakes up and he's a, oh, it's the sound you heard in the universe, new planetary systems are creating. So you understand the, the lines in a simple leaf and the fine threads of fragility. It's in our life and it's in nature as well. Close connection. Next. Then we, I want to talk about yoga a little also. We say no over, it's only half picture, but it doesn't matter. No overthinking, don't think too much. Let go, let go mind. But think positive, create health and satisfaction and peace with fresh green food to avoid the opposite. The opposite is stress, illness, aggressions, all the way to start a war. So from basic to quality in lifestyle, we don't want to leave the comfort zone and we are lazy and egocentric in our livings and our lifestyle. We don't want to leave, but we all know that there are a transformation. We have to do it. It must be done. So next, I want to mention a little about our organization, Hindu Forum, and what we do now. We working close with communities and other organizations, as I told you earlier. We are making leadership on holding back COVID. We have done this for all this COVID time. And the temples, everything has of course been closed down. And we are setting up instead participation on net on yoga and the participation and arranging. We have an organization called Healing Our Earth. It gives vegetarian programs and vegan programs and we are taking part in arranging program on World Environment Day every year. We have a big seminar and we have made a film program on water and faith with Sweden International Water Institute. They are doing films of our relation to, we don't talk much today about water, but water is very, very important, even in both ritual us and in the, our own future. We are extending awareness on the Hindu declaration of climate change, a global call to 900 million Hindus. Now we have the amount <laughs> living worldwide, 900 millions living worldwide to live lives in harmony and balance with the natural world. I also want to make very clear that Hinduism, unlike other maybe, do not have a super head or one scripture only that says what we should all think at the same time. No, it's not the fact. And we are also very open for new partners, both religious and secular. We want to, to cooperate with 
And we always had these issues of vegan, vegetarian, and nature, environment, etc., on uh, on our agenda all, all the way from the start, and also thousands of years ago. So it's nothing new for us. But we are positive to see bridge building between us and other religious and grou other groups. We are working a lot in interfaith uh, community almost everywhere in the world. And uh, we, we want to keep up uh, things with the uh, possibility to attract good values and good results. Next. Yeah, uh, I will answer a question and thanks for listening. And Om Shanti, keep the peace up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marie. Uh, we have one question uh, for you, and that is about, because the big majority of Hindus actually live in India. Uh, India is uh, uh, really trying to uh, increase its production of milk and cheese. And uh, could you say something about eating uh, milk and cheese when you are a Hindu? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> we are allowed to eat milk and cheese. Even God, we were talking before if Muhammad or uh, Jesus was eating meat, but our one of our gods like Krishna, he is eating butter. Butter is the blessing. The G, the, the purified butter is the blessing. So I no, don't see the problem in that. I also know I was visiting Iskon this week they are trying to set up a milk production to, to serve every altar, every deity in the temples with the clean milk. So I see that the problem is not the, the way people think it is. The problem is how we do it, how we treat the cows. Yeah. We have to rearrange the old thing. Cows must be out, maybe milk robots, maybe church rebuilt all the the homes, the stables uh, for Goshalas. It must be development there. And maybe also the the cows and cows should not be separated as soon as it's done today. It should be differences, big, big opportunities. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, we have five, ten minutes left. And I will let in, now it's... Dr. Phillips free. wants something. Yeah, yes, now it's free for reactions. Philip. Thank you. Uh, can Yes, you can. Uh, I was just going to follow that up, Marie, that if uh, we, we sometimes um, buy cheese from a non-slaughter herd, which is associated with a Hindu community in Britain, um, and... Uh, uh, the um, the way the herd is kept is uh, follows the lines you've just outlined, uh, and once the cows um, are past uh, milking age, uh, they're simply put out to pasture, so um, on a pension, if you like, and that pension is paid for in the cost of the cheese, which makes it phenomenally expensive, uh, and for us, it's something that we uh, would buy maybe two or three times a year because it, it, it's very expensive. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't compliance with the kind of practices you've outlined mean that cheese and milk would be quite a luxury in India? Yes, it could be like this, not only in India, also here. It's not like I always uh, talk about uh, my own experience. It's not like when we were small children, we should have milk, 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 milk all the time. Every meal is sweet. We have milk, a lot of milk. It's not like that. It's not, uh, maybe that's, that is the link to go closer to veganism. It's not for daily use or that's what I said. That's what I told you that uh, they are setting up for milk production for deities, for gods, uh, only for altar. And that what is left can maybe be for people to have in special locations. But it will not be that we will not have these products 
Of course, there are vegans somewhere, everywhere, and some vegans also in uh, India. But it, it's a, a choice of free will. <laughs>